pointing fingers. Ukraine and Russia point fingers at each other over the downing of the Russian jet, supposedly carrying prisoners of war. The Kremlin says that Ukraine fired at the jet. However, Ukraine blames Russian manipulation. More questions than answers. Anime Justice A Japanese man has been sentenced to death for an arson attack at a Kyoto Animation Studio in 2019, which killed 36 people and injured dozens more. Trailing Trump No place like home for Haley as she pins her presidential hopes on South Carolina's upcoming primary. According to polling averages, Trump has 62% of the vote in South Carolina, while Haley has only 25. And who's chicken? A butter chicken masala dish makes its way to the courts. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Alaverna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Mahish Jani. A very good evening everyone and thank you for making us a part of your evenings. While the opposition in Thailand gets a boost from a recent court ruling, Microsoft becomes a trillion dollars richer. All those stories are coming up, but first we start in Russia. Well, there is more confusion than answers in yesterday's plane crash near the Ukrainian border as both nations are pointing the finger at each other and assigning the blame. Russia's Ministry of Defense accused Ukraine of shooting down a military craft that was carrying Ukrainian prisoners of war over Russia's western Belgorod region, killing everyone on board. The claim about what downed the IS-76 aircraft could not be confirmed, but the ministry said that Russian radar systems had detected the launch of two Ukrainian missiles that struck the plane. Ukrainian officials warned against sharing unverified information with the country's coordination headquarters for the treatment of prisoners of war, issuing a statement saying, quote, the enemy is actively conducting information special operations against Ukraine aimed at destabilizing the Ukrainian society, end of quote. The last seconds of the doomed flight, disappearing behind buildings as it went down before a thunderous sound at a rising fireball. At the front of the plane, there was fire, this witness says. Then there was an explosion. Close analysis appears to show something falling from the aircraft before the crash. Russia says 74 people on board were killed, including 65 Ukrainians being transported to the border for a prisoner swap. The Aleutian military aircraft went down in the Belgorod region, which borders Ukraine. Russia says radars registered the launch of two Ukrainian missiles before the plane crashed. They shot their own soldiers in the air, their own, the Speaker of Russia's parliament told lawmakers, while Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov in the United Nations called it a terrorist act. Ukraine did not say it shot down the aircraft, but did say a prisoner swap had been scheduled for the day, but claimed Russia had failed to give an agreed alert about creating a safe airspace. Ultimately, establishing the truth may be as elusive as finding peace in this war. Well, let's get uh, more insight into this story. For that, let's cross over to Moscow, Russia, and to Simashi Pereira standing by with reactions to this story. Simashi? Yes, Mahesh, Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky has accused Moscow of playing with the lives of Ukrainian prisoners. He demanded an international inquiry. Ukraine stressed it had no reliable information about who was on board and warned the incident may have involved planned and deliberate actions by Russia. In his video addresses, President Zelensky said it was obvious that Russians are playing with the feelings of their relatives and with emotions of their society. The Ukraine leader, who has cancelled a planned regional trip linked to his birthday, stresses that all clear facts must be established. Mahish? Absolutely. Well, other than the world news, special correspondent Simarshi Pereira reporting from Moscow, Russia. Thank you. Well, the U.S. aviation regulator says it will allow Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets to resume flying after inspections are completed. 
the Federal Aviation Administration of the United States grounded 171 of the planes after an unused door broke away mid-flight. United Airlines and Alaska Airlines plan to start returning the jets to service in the coming days. US watchdogs say Boeing's MAX 9 jets can fly again, but it's not all good news for the troubled planes. The Federal Aviation Administration lifted a grounding order late Wednesday. The jets had been out of service following the mid-air blowout of a big panel on one operated by Alaska Airlines. Now the FAA says the aircraft can fly again once inspections are completed. That's a big relief to Alaskan and United, the type's two main operators. They've been forced to cancel thousands of flights. But the FAA also barred Boeing from increasing output of the model. Regulators said they wouldn't approve any rise in production until they were satisfied that quality control issues had been addressed. The ruling is a big blow for Boeing, which had wanted to boost output to close the gap with European rival Airbus. Speaking after a meeting with lawmakers, Chief Executive Dave Calhoun sought to reassure travellers. We believe in our airplanes. We feel that safe airplanes, our people do. We have confidence in the safety of our airplanes, and that's what all of this is about. And we fully understand the gravity. Production of MAX jets was supposed to hit 38 per month by the end of last year, rising to almost 58 per month in late 2025. Now plans to set up an extra production line could be in doubt, with the FAA not saying when its curbs would end. Analysts say the impact of the restrictions could ripple right across the industry as the MAX jets are a big source of business for suppliers. In better news for Boeing, the company has delivered a MAX to China for the first time since early 2019, a breakthrough for the firm in one of the world's most important aviation markets. Beijing had halted deliveries of the planes following two fatal crashes that were traced to a design flaw. Well, over to Thailand now. Peter Limironra, the popular politician who is uh, blocked from becoming Thailand's Prime Minister, cleared a legal hurdle after the country's constitutional court found that he was not guilty of violating election law, allowing him to be reinstated as a lawmaker. But his legal troubles are far from over. He and his uh, political party, the Move Forward Party, are accused of violating the country's constitution because they have called to weaken a notoriously harsh law that criminalizes criticism of the monarchy. Former Thai Prime Ministerial hopeful Peter Lim Jaronrat has been cleared of violating election rules in the first of two cases targeting a popular opposition that has plans for radical reforms. The Constitutional Court on Wednesday cleared Peter of any wrongdoing, deeming the firm he held shares in had no broadcast concession and was not a mass media organisation. Harvard-educated Peter's bid to become Premier last year was thwarted by lawmakers allied with the Royalist military. The verdict will be a boost for his anti-establishment Move Forward party, the surprise winner of the 2023 election and the biggest party in Parliament. I feel, I feel all right. I feel uh, regular like any other working day. Uh, in my mind right now is, is about the next steps of the kind of work that needs to be done, uh, specifically the strategic roadmap of the party. Move Forward courted young and urban voters with a bold agenda to end business monopolies and change a law that punishes insults of the monarchy with long prison terms. Peter remains popular, backed by 39% of respondents in a poll last month, with Prime Minister Sareta Tavisin at 22%. Move Forward is not out of the woods yet. The same court decides next week on whether its push to amend the law on royal insults amounts to an attempt to overthrow the democratic regime of government with the king as head of state. The cases are part of a two-decade battle for power in Thailand, pitting royalists, military and old money families against parties elected on populist or progressive platforms. We're going to take a short commercial break. More world news right after this.
Welcome back everyone to World News Tonight. Now, a court in Japan has sentenced a man to death after he was convicted of murdering 36 people in an arson attack on a Kyoto animation studio in 2019. The Kyoto's district court today said that it found Shinji Oba mentally capable of facing punishment for murder, arson and other crimes in the attack on Kyoto's animation studio 1 on July 18th that year, which shocked Japan and drew uh, an outpouring of grief from anime fans worldwide. Shinji Aoba, now 45 years old, set the studio ablaze in 2019 by dousing the entrance area of the Kyoto-based studio, better known as KyoAni, with petrol, killing mostly young artists. He himself suffered heavy burns and underwent intensive treatment for nearly a year. Reports say Ioba held a grudge against the studio known for the series Violet Evergarden. Ioba told police that he believed the studio had plagiarized his novel, an allegation Kyo Annie denies. Prosecutors had demanded the death penalty for Ioba, while local media say his defense sought a lighter sentence or to have him acquitted due to, quote, mental incompetence. The arson attacks sent shockwaves not only through Japan where violent crime is rare, but also through the studio's far-reaching overseas fan base and prompted condolences from world leaders. To the UK now, Britain's military is discussing how to build a force of up to half a million people, including civilians, to defend the UK in the event of a full-scale war with a country such as Russia. Uh, following that story for us tonight is our World 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 Special Correspondent Clifford Pereira, who is standing by in Yorkshire in the UK with the latest. Clifford? Yes, Mahesh. The head of Britain's army has said the nation should train a citizen army ready to fight a war on land in the future. General Sir Patrick Sanders warned that an increase in reserve forces alone would not be enough. He highlighted the threat from Russia and pointed to steps being taken by other European nations to put their population on a war footing. He also called for more to be done to equip and modernize the UK's armed forces. He talked about need for the UK's pre-war generation to prepare for the possibility of war and said that was a whole of nation undertaking. This is not the first time General Sir Patrick has warned of the increasing threat of war and expressed concerns about Britain's lack of readiness. Mahesh. Indeed. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, Clifford Pereira, other Derana World News Special Correspondent reporting from Yorkshire in the UK. Thank you. Well, um, the latest on the road to the White House, Donald Trump has warned donors that they will be barred from his MAGA camp if they make further contributions to Nikki Haley's campaign, raising the stakes for her billionaire backers a day after she was defeated in the New Hampshire primary. After dominating the first two contests in the Republican race, Trump has tried to snuff out his rival's campaign, labeling her an imposter who lacks a real base of support in the party. However, Nikki Haley says that she's, a so she's going to soldier on until her home state primary. And the next one is my sweet state of South Carolina. Tonight, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley is bringing her campaign home, vowing her race for the White House is far from over, despite her positioning in New Hampshire's primary, unable to overtake former President Donald Trump. South Carolina voters don't want a coronation. They want an election. <laughs> But Haley has a battle ahead of her, even in her home state, where polls show former President Trump in the lead by double digits. A major roadblock for Haley beyond Trump's popularity has been a slew of Trump endorsements from South Carolina lawmakers. Five of the state's six GOP House members are backing him. So are a number of state officials, including the South Carolina governor and both South Carolina senators. She actually appointed you, Tim. <laughs> and... Think of it, appointed, and you're the senator of his state. You must really hate her. I just love you. No, that's... 
But the former U.N. ambassador has remained defiant, saying she's in it for the long haul, ramping up her attacks against President Joe Biden and former President Trump. Same old Biden and Trump. Her campaign spending four million dollars on two new ads airing now in South Carolina. Her story started right here. America's youngest governor. Haley's campaign arguing South Carolina voters know her and have already voted for her to be governor of their state twice. I don't think Mickey Haley's going to do too well here in this state either. Most of them, and well, I have, come to the conclusion that she, she's, she's not ready for prime time. Well, Microsoft's market cap briefly surpassed $3 trillion in intraday trading yesterday uh, as the stock market climbed more than 1% and hit around $404 per share. Uh, stock erased some of its gains uh, throughout the day and closed at 401.5 per share. Microsoft soared to new heights on Wednesday. For the first time ever, the software giant crossed a $3 trillion milestone and kept its place as the world's second most valuable company behind Apple. The two companies have been vying for the most capitalized stock on Wall Street since the start of the year, with Microsoft briefly dethroning the iPhone maker earlier this month. Backed by its investment in ChatGPT maker OpenAI, Microsoft is widely seen as a frontrunner in the race for market dominance in the rollout of generative artificial intelligence. Its competitors on that front include other tech heavyweights like Google owner Alphabet and Facebook owner Meta. Using OpenAI's technology, Microsoft has rolled out newer versions of its flagship software, as well as its Bing search engine, which is expected to better compete with Google. Apple, on the other hand, faces slowing demand for its iPhones, particularly in China, where the company is offering customers rare discounts to boost sales amid stiff competition from Huawei and other homegrown rivals. Well, if you are an iPhone user, there's a story coming up right after this break, so stick around. Welcome back everyone to World News Tonight. Now, Apple has launched a new security feature to protect personal data, including the money app and personal photos, if your phone is stolen. A new security setting from Apple tonight, hoping to stop a specific and insidious new iPhone crime. Thieves trick people into exposing their iPhone passcodes, often late at night at bars, then steal their phones. With a passcode, they can change Apple ID passwords and face IDs so they can take lots and lots of money. And Apple appears to have taken notice. The new stolen device protection setting restricts access with the phone's passcode, instead requiring face or touch ID for multiple settings, including Apple ID accounts and the iPhone's iCloud keychain, which many people use to store banking passwords. For some settings, when the phone is not in a usual location like home or work, the user will need face or touch ID and then have to wait another hour to use biometrics again before getting access. Well, there's an update to that Barbie story which we brought to you yesterday. Um, apparently, this Barbie knows a thing or two about a major upset. Former First Lady Hillary Clinton had words of encouragement for Barbie star Margot Robbie and director Greta Gerwig after the pair were snubbed during the 2024 Oscar nominations. Hi, Ken. To the legion of Barbie fans. Never forget that the system is rigged, so find a way to acknowledge that, but also always be grateful. The Oscar nominations were life imitating art. Snubbed the two women who brought Barbie here? to life, Greta Gerwig and lead actress Margot Robbie. You have to answer for men's bad behavior, which is insane, but if you point that out, you're accused of complaining. Supporting actress America Ferreira was nominated, and so was Ryan Gosling. I'm just kidding. The supporting actor said there is no movie without Gerwig and Robbie, adding they made us laugh, they broke our hearts, they pushed the culture, and they made history. Could I just meet the woman in charge, your CEO? Oh, that would be me. Hillary Clinton tweeted, while it can sting to win the box office but not take home the gold, your millions of fans love you. Love Barbie is the highest grossing right film now. ever by a female director, earning nearly a billion and a half dollars at the box office. 
It did receive eight Oscar nominations, including Best Picture with Robbie listed as a producer and Gerwig nominated for Adapted Screenplay. I'm not good enough for anything. Well, a familiar face is returning uh, to television once again. John Stewart will return to The Daily Show for its upcoming season, hosting one day a week. Stewart, who hosted the show for 16 years before stepping down in 2015, will serve as the Comedy Central show's uh, host on Monday nights and will also be an executive producer. Stewart uh, will start on February 12th and stay on the show through the election of 2024. Now, that is according to a news release from um, the late night show itself. I think when uh, Jon Stewart was on that show, it was, it was really good. After he left, it was all downhill. Anyway, butter chicken, one of India's best known dishes globally, is delicious and apparently also contentious, with two Indian restaurant chains battling in court over claims to its origins. Now, the lawsuit, which uh, has become a hot topic in India, was brought by the family behind Moti Mahal, a famed Delhi restaurant brand. This is Moti Mahal a well-known deli restaurant brand that has served famous guests, such as former U.S. President Richard Nixon. The family behind the chain brought the lawsuit forward. It claims founder Kundin Lal Gujal created the dish, which is made with tandoor cooked chicken, tomato gravy, cream, and butter, in a restaurant in Peshawar in the 1930s, before it moved to Delhi. We will not allow anybody to take, out, take away our legacy. Monish Gujal is the chain's managing director. It is just for public knowledge. We don't want public to be misled. In a court filing that is more than 2,700 pages long, it's suing rival Daria Ganj over the invention of butter chicken, as well as a popular lentil dish. The Gujal family is seeking $240,000 in damages, alleging the rival eatery has also copied the look and feel of its branches. Daria Ganj was established in 2019. It counters that its late family member teamed up with Gujal to open the Delhi restaurant in 1947. And that's when the dish was created. That means Daria Ganj can also lay claim to the dish's invention, it argues. Amit Baga is Daria Ganj's CEO and co-founder. Butter chicken and dal makhani are dishes which were invented in a restaurant called Moti Mel. And this Moti Mel restaurant was founded by three partners and Mr. Kundala Jaggi was one of the co-founders of that restaurant. And, and that is why we use this name. The dispute has gripped the country, with the next hearing set for May. I mean, you've got to trace back to history in order to find out who, who actually invented it. And probably not, might not be these two uh, restaurants, even though they say it's theirs. Anyway, that is a part of your world tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'll be back again tomorrow at the same time with another edition of World News. See you then. Bye for now.